I'm Bryce Bible, UB's Vice President and Chief Information Officer. I'll be sitting down with students, faculty, staff, and other thought leaders outside of UB to highlight some important technology topics that affect campus community members like you. Let's take a ride in one of our electric tech squad vans and meet our guest today. Our guest today is UB's Vice President and Director of Athletics. During Mark Allnut's time here, UB Athletics has experienced incredible success. Both the men's and women's basketball teams have received the national rankings for the first time in school history. The UB Bulls football team accomplished two bowl wins, and as you'll soon learn, UB Athletics is using technology behind the scenes every day to put UB in a league of their own. All right, well, welcome to this episode of Tech Talk. Today's uh, guest is Mark Allnut, the uh, athletic director here at the university. Mark, welcome very much. We appreciate having you today. Um, can you tell us at the beginning a little bit about yourself, your background, what brought you to UB? And of course, I know your stints in, uh, in Missouri and def definitely Tennessee. Yeah, uh, to no, no problem at all. Well, first of all, Bryce, thank you for having me. Um, you know, what brought me to Buffalo? I heard they had a just, you know, below average snowfall you know, in, in, in the wintertime, but but no. Party. You know, obviously my, my background is a former uh, Division One student athlete. I was fortunate enough to play uh, football at the University of Missouri and just through my experience there and being a student athlete after I graduated, you know, I quickly learned that I wanted to get back into athletics. And, you know, when I got back to athletics, I had a decision to make, whether coaching or administration. And, you know, I chose administration. And, and it's, it's simple as, as a student athlete, you know the the w's as i say yeah. you know the what the when the where the the who but you never know the how and, and the how is something that intrigued me uh in terms of okay how do you get to point a to point b you know what, what do budgets look like uh you know how do you market a program and so just from there you know my climb that proverbial ladder so to speak at missouri end up being a, a senior associate athletics director uh, had an opportunity to go to Southeast Missouri State University. Yeah. That was my first uh, AD job, uh, Division One institution. Spent three years there. I was recruited to go to Memphis as the uh, the deputy AD, the number two person there. And then um, you know this opportunity came up, and I was approached by a, a, a you know a search firm about my interest. And and quickly I realized about coming to Buffalo was just looking at Buffalo's history, looking at the lineage of athletic directors that were here uh, prior to me. Mm -hmm. You can go either further back, but Ward Manuel, Danny White, Alan Green, some phenomenal names there. And I went through the process, love the people here, love the opportunity to take. And uh, when I was offered the job, you know, gladly accepted it and been here now over five years, going into year six. And you built on the success of those that have come before you, but you've had a lot of success since you've been here. Talk a little bit about kind of where your mind has been and where's the athletic program going and how does it got to the success it has now? Well, well again, as I mentioned the, the previous athletic director, give them credit for, for laying the foundation, having success, but I truly believe in my role, it's not about me. You know, I'm more of a, a, a we person. It's, it's about surrounding our student athletes with the right people. You know, first and foremost, being able to hire quality coaches, quality support staff. Um, you know, I'm well versed in all areas of athletics and intercollegiate athletics, but I have to have you know people who are experts and very knowledgeable in in the in terms of compliance, in terms of fundraising, in terms of internal operations, uh, Title IX, whatever the case might be. So surrounding myself with with key people on our leadership team to really help uh, guide uh, the direction that we're going. But also more importantly, I, I see you know Buffalo University at Buffalo now being a flagship institution. You know, I feel that you know there's endless possibilities when it comes to athletics, and when we have opportunities to continue to build upon facilities that enhances the experiences of our student Just athletes. Just broke ground on yeah, some more. Right? Broke, yes. broke ground on the Brittany Murchie Mula uh, Athletic Performance Center, which right. is a new weight room that's going to be attached to our, our field house. But you know, that's just one example of you know ways we're trying to build this to be able to provide a first class experience for our student athletes, being able to have the resources to compete at a high level in the Mid-American Conference and, and see what the next steps might be. You mentioned a lot of pieces and parts that, that it takes to run an athletic department. I'd like to ask you a little bit about technology, not just about ours, but kind of what's been your journey? What have you seen how technologies have been used uh, in athletics in the various programs? And then kind of how's that played in at UB? 
Well, my, my first job in athletics, so this is going back to spring of 1998. Believe it or not, I was in the video room. Uh, I, was, I was working with our, uh, our, our, our head video person uh, for, the, for the football team. And I remember how we had to um, essentially intercut tapes, all right? So it was, it was two VHS machines where we would have an end zone copy of the football and a sideline copy. And we literally had to record and, put, and splice both of them together to make a, a intermix, which is again, coach like seeing the sideline and the um, and then the end zone. That would take hours, literally. Yeah. That would take hours. So, but I mean, that's just one example in terms of how you know technology continues to you know obviously progress, advance, and make our job easier. Now it's digital, which uh, yeah. you know it's just the push of the buttons, inputting things, and and within minutes, you know you're spitting out you know a coach's version of practice or a game or what have you. Uh, you know, just a key example of that. You know, back when I started. You know, we would play a game on the road someplace, and then when we got home, it was myself, a couple others, that would put together tape. And that tape would be ready for the coaches to grade that tape, you know, that Sunday morning when they got back in the office. Nowadays, you know, we're waiting on the bus after we leave a, a venue, and our, our video staff is handing out Microsoft Surfaces to our coaches, and that, and that, that game film is there where they can start grading, where they can look at it and review it. And, and it's funny because generally when I travel, I sit next to, you know, Coach Linquist on the football side of things or even, mm -hmm. or even you know, our new basketball coach, well, I'll be sitting next to him, George Hakovich. Yeah. And, you know, they're already reviewing tape, you know, before, but before we even get in the air to come back. Um, also, I think the other thing that's very important, and, and I go back to COVID on, on this one, is, you know, when that first went down, you know, we're such a hands-on group in terms of communicating especially when it comes to communicating to our student athletes. And, and one of the questions we've had, we had when, when things were shut down, student athletes, uh, students in general, you know, stayed home, uh, they didn't come back for spring break, is how were we gonna communicate to, to our students? Right, right. And that was a big question. How can we communicate to them at a high level, uh, you know, obviously keep them focused, keep, the, keep in touch with them, give them the updates in terms of what's happening from, you know, the various aspects of going through COVID. And, and lo and behold, you know, we never heard about it before, but but Zoom. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Zoom. You know, we went from zero to 100 miles an hour yeah, with Zoom. Zoom, you know, yes. uh, Microsoft Teams, you know, yeah, all right. that. But the only reason why I bring that up is because that's now become just such a central piece of, of how we communicate, especially when it comes sure. to uh, recruiting prospective student athletes. Right. You know, a lot of times you might not be able to make it to, you know, California, for example, or you might not be able to make overseas, but at least you can be able to communicate and, and talk. And so we see a lot more of our meetings. Again, we do a lot of in-person, you know, recruiting, but, you know, being able to have that technology available to us has been key. Yeah, I got to think that the recruiting aspect of this could be really big because you've got now you've got digital footage of players mm -hmm. that aren't splice tapes. Yeah. Plus, you can interact with Zoom and other things on a more regular basis, I guess, within the rules yeah. Of, yeah. of how that operates. Uh, so today, if you looked at UB specifically, what are, what are some of the key technologies that, that are really important to the success of the program? Well, we always talk about uh, student-athlete you know, health and safety. Uh, okay. First, first and foremost, and, and you might notice when you come to the games, it's it's funny because when I say games, mainly mainly basketball games, you can see you know our our, our young men or young women you know running up and down the court, and all of a sudden there's some device that falls off of them, and people uh -huh. are like, what, what is that? Is that some some part of their apparel or the uniform? You know, that's essentially a uh, a monitor that we have on them, like a heartbeat monitor that it does more than measure the heartbeat; it measures exertion, and you know, the, the great aspect about that technology, which our athletic trainers, they monitor, you know, prior to basketball games is, you know, how are they exerting themselves? How are they preparing themselves for the competition? So, yes, it does measure heartbeat, but also measure overall exertion. So you have certain zones, green, yellow, and red. And as you're building up to play a contest, you know, our trainers are making sure you're kind of in that yellow zone. So you're not overexerting yourself in that red zone. Again, this combination of, of heartbeat and other, other factors they do. And you're not down here in the green where you're not prepared. So, you know, I always like, you know, pregame, obviously talking to donors, talking to alums and everything yeah. else. But I always go by, you know, our bench and uh -huh. talk to athletic trainers and say, hey, how are, how are our guys levels? <laughs> and, you know, he or she would tell me, yeah, they're, they're great. They're right here where they're supposed to be. Oh, so-and-so needs to kind of pick it up a little bit and, and that. But, but again, I think also it's, it's part for, from a substitution pattern too, because we can be able to observe it, you know, during, oh, the, during game, the game, during, during the game as well. And if we can see, you know, someone that might be overexerting themselves too much and 
we feel that they might need a rest. I mean, that's obviously a key point for our coaches to be able to realize that and understand that. So, yeah, that aspect of it, there's a, a system called the catapult system, which uh, football utilizes that, soccer utilizes that uh, primarily in our sports. But the catapult system is, whether it's used during practice, during games, it's going to measure everything. It's going to measure heartbeat. It's going to measure uh, the amount of distance that you travel. It's going to measure acceleration, it's going to measure your top speed. So, you know, for us to be able to, you know, have all those indicators, you know, available to not just our athletic trainer, but to our coaches, you know, for, for a coach to understand that during a typical match, you know, so-and-so is going to run, you know, eight, nine miles. So what does that conditioning look like leading up to the season to make sure that they're prepared, you know, for that exertion? Wow, that is quite interesting. Uh, it's uh, it reminds me of like playing Madden football on <laughs> you know your video games where you can you can you see the performance of the uh, players, but you get the same thing in real time, in yep. real life, right? No, you do get the same thing in real time, real real life. So again, it's just very beneficial to understand kind of what the thresholds are of the individual you know student athlete because not everyone's built the same. Not everyone's going to have the same sure. endurance levels, uh, the the same capacity to be able to do what they what they want to do. I think also too another thing is we kind of there's this technology so you know it's interesting how it's evolved but even how you communicate you know I mentioned about from a zoom standpoint before but you know we have to fill out so many forms our student athletes have to fill out so sure. many forms on a, on a you know every semester but you know through what we have we have an arms uh, program which is through teamworks where all their forms now are, are digital where they can go in, you know, obviously on their laptop, on their phone primarily, because, you know, a lot of times people do so much, you know, this generation on their phones to be able to fill out, be able to respond to whether it's questionnaires, whether it's um, uh, information we need from a compliance standpoint, even from a scheduling standpoint, you know, so we're not just giving people sheets of paper or just putting stuff up on the grease board, you know, they have access to it. So they understand what the, what the schedule looks like, you know, for, for the week. And just to be able to have that clear line of communication, what's always available at their fingertips, is is is, is really uh, it's easier. It's making life a lot easier. How does all of this monitoring and performance opportunities at the for the the student athlete? How do you blend technology that they use for the classroom? Because obviously students are here to get their degree, and they happen to have great athletic ability, and so they get to. Pre- participate. Does all that fit together with our students? It, it does. It does fit together. You know, obviously we have an incredible infrastructure here at the University of Buffalo that, you know, all of our students, not just our student athletes, you know, take advantage of it. And then, you know, we're able to, um, you know, merge all that together and, and be, you know, just one concise operation, not sure. just having just various one-offs here and there. And, and I give credit, you know, from that aspect of it in terms of, you know, our academic support. Uh, area, you know, utilize that, um, you know, with our student athletes, being able to, um, for them to be able to come to our computer lab and just have yeah. the same type of, you know, obviously connectivity, obviously access as they would with any computer lab, you know, here on campus. Sure. And for, you know, when you talk about, uh, you know, remote learning, mm-hmm. uh, having that ability. Because they may be on the road a lot of the season, a, a, right? Exactly yeah. right. So having that ability yeah. to be able to, and you hear the stories. I hear the stories personally all the time where, you know, student athletes, you know, are on the road, you know, quite a bit. They'll, mm-hmm. they'll play a game and, you know what, they're either having to submit, you know, a homework assignment or right. studying for a test or submit a paper or what have you. So, you know, one thing that we're very cognizant of is, you know, our buses when we bid them out every, every year, sure. you know, they have to have that Wi-Fi you know, sure. capability, which is which is very important to be able to do that, so they can stay up and stay you know ahead of their work as it pertains to the classroom. Oh, very interesting. So, uh, back to athletics and performance, it, or you talked about performance a little bit. What about uh, preventing injuries? Or or that it, the technology has to have a role there, and I bet it's evolved a lot, both at the the high school level, the college level, and even the professional level. There, and there's a myriad of examples I can give you, but right. um, um, you know, the device that we have in our in our weight room, it's a, it's called a Tendo unit. Okay, and you, right. Tendo unit, what is that? Okay, so a Tendo unit is, a, is attached to all of our weight racks, right. and essentially what that does, it it measures um, it, it measures force. It measures so when you're so for example, if you're someone squatting on a rack, it's going to measure, you know, the the force of the weight that they throw up and down, okay? And 
the, the key aspect about that is, you know, of course, coaches are looking at ways when they structure a program for them to get stronger. Okay. And a lot of times it's not just about weight. Okay. It's about, I'm sorry, when I say weight, it's not about more weight. It's about the force that they're able to deliver, okay. you know, um, like now, exploding off the, the exploding, line, right? exploding yeah. off the line, right. whatever the case is. But yeah. you know, in working conjunction, if there is someone who's coming off injury, mm-hmm. or someone that we notice, you know, that 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 force is not there. Mm-hmm. You know, usually they're up here at you know whatever percent. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to squatting, but for whatever reason they're down here. So what are the variables in terms of why it's like that? Is it because you know they're still recovering from a game? Is it because you know there there is something with their you know in their hips or their knee or something that's preventing them to to go even further? So, an opportunity to be able to you know monitor that and and when we see that they're not progressing where they are, okay, why why is that? And could there be uh, injury that they you know what they're not aware of? You know, in one of their joints in their bodies, so, so as to be able to understand that and dig more into it. That's interesting because it's it's uh, real data that helps both the student athlete and the coaches see what the performance is. Uh, as uh, not as athletic as you, but I did play in school, right? And uh, you would want to cover your injuries. I don't want to be pulled out. I want to play. But this is an objective way to have data that helps both the athlete and the coaches see what's going on. Yeah. So, but even the technology that. when we talk about concussions, you know, concussions sure. is, is, yeah. is, is a big deal. Big okay. expertise at UB as yeah, well. Without a doubt. Faculty. Without a doubt. You know, yeah. one, of the, one of the best in the world. Yes. You know, obviously we're so grateful to have him at, at UB. But, yeah. you know, in terms of, you know, utilizing technology to be able to assess, you know, the, yeah. that brain sure. trauma. And, and where where we potentially are, and you know, back in the old days, it was okay. Gosh, maybe it was just a headache, you know, and what have you. And, and you know, you would that person you wouldn't know. But nowadays, we're able to evaluate and assess it to where you know what we make sure that you know all symptoms are at are gone, are at a point where they can continue to, if they're not competing, at least continue to be involved and active. And how can we assimilate them to being able to compete mm-hmm. again? So again, there's there's technology in that, you know, and I think the last thing when you when you talk about technology when it pertains to the student athlete is, you know, the opportunity to utilize, you know, and this technology is all around us, but the opportunity for us to 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 utilize, you know, something as simple as a surface, yeah, yeah. and something that can be able to gather, you know, information on their medical history, or to be able to see their history of performance, um, to be able to see what that performance looks like pre-game, you know, post-game, uh, in the off season. So essentially year round and be able to understand where those levels are, see where they've progressed, see where they improved, but also know at the end of the day, you know, what is that, that maximum output. And to me, that's, 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 that's key. There's the wonderful benefits of IT, but there's also downsides, negative things. We see security issues and other things happen. But from an athletic point of view and from a technology point of view, do you see downsides? You know, you can go back to your early playing days and technology wasn't near as involved as it is today. Do you see downsides or potential of downside, I guess? Yeah, I mean, again, it's not <laughs> it's not related due to technology okay. uh, per se, but it is. And, and, and yeah. you're like, well, Mark, that's the most confusing comment you've, you've made today. But, you know, you look at social media, yeah. you know, for example, sure. um, that that's out there. Obviously, you know, a, a great way to, to communicate, great way to gather information, hopefully the right information, but also right. too, there can be effects of social media negatively on the, on the student athlete after a loss, sure. you know, for, oh, for yeah. example. Yeah. Uh, Fans and then, can be brutal. Yeah, and then what's yeah. being said to that to that to that student athlete you know also the other aspect too outside of social media but then it's also related to it is you know it, it's so easy now to gamble and then wow. we've seen headlines out yeah, there sure. at the collegiate level but also at the professional level because yeah. nowadays with the apps and mm-hmm. and what's out there more and more states have been uh, are legalizing gambling where everything's on your on your phone so that's a that's a technology that didn't exist before you yeah. had to you know physically go to a sport book right. someplace and lay down lay right. down a bet or maybe pick up the phone off sea somewhere to yeah, right. to to lay down a bet but but the the only thing that concerns me about that is that you know it's just becoming more rampant now there's great uh, from a from a technology standpoint as well there's great um, integrity opportunities out there um, you know the casinos are very good at you know being able to notice if there is some 
extreme differences in terms of you know lines that are out there that might be some you know improprieties out there in terms of how you bet. Yeah. But right. you know I think just as you mentioned from a negative standpoint, you know everything is so accessible. Which again we mentioned could be positive, but yes. also at the same time those, those those negative aspects to it. And then two is heck, I have to do this with my kids, and you know we're continuing to educate them. <laughs> when you talk about you know spam that's sent to your computer, mm-hmm. I mean. You have to be very diligent and understand when you get things that might be enticing or might have some, you know, some incredible, you know, subject line that, oh yeah, we knew that you bought that 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 Powerball ticket. You know, you're the winner. Go check your, but hey, click on this attachment right, right here. Well, right. wait a second. Now, what, right. what 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 is that? So, you know, again, just continue to educate, you know, our, our folks and to be able to safeguard it, you know, very well. But I, I will say this in terms of in terms of that, um, you know, we definitely appreciate when when those spam. You know, when they occur at a campus-wide, institutional-wide yeah. standpoint, you know, messaging from you know your offices, your folks have been great to be able to, first of all, um, you know, help prevent that, but also alert people. So put on, you know, think about a crystal ball, right? If you had a crystal ball and you're thinking about technology and how it affects athletics, uh, maybe UB, but even even all levels of athletics, where what do you where do you see some of this going? These AI systems and what they can do, and then I'm just curious if, you know, sitting in your vantage point, looking over the top uh, athletic program in the state of New York, you know, where do you see this going? Well, you know, as we, we'll, we'll continue to see it evolve, but when we talk about AI, um, yeah. and you can answer this question, what's probably the biggest complaint that a fan might have after a game, or sometimes even during a game. Oh well, uh, you know, uh, I guess Monday morning quarterbacking. They want to be the decisions. coaching, right? They want to be coaching. decisions. Okay, they want to be part of the decisions. Outside, outside of the coach, what's what's probably the the next biggest issue with with athletics, the the game competition, the officiating. Oh, of course, the officiating. I was reading about Major League Baseball just this yeah, morning. Just so yes, officiating. Right. So yes. combined with right now, there is a shortage of, of officials. At the, especially at the high school level, okay. that is slowly going yeah. up. I mean, you know, I, I feel sorry for him. I'm, you know, my youngest son is still at the youth level, and and, yeah. and gosh, you know, sometimes the abuse that you know these people who volunteer their time to do it, uh, you know, it might make a person say, "I don't want to become an official." That, so, right. you know, what I do see, Bryce, and again, I can't tell you if this is five years or, yeah. or ten years down the road, but uh, very similar to what you mentioned from a you know major league baseball standpoint, is utilizing AI. Uh-huh. to 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 do the officiating wow. you know um wow. it's it's easy with like when you watch baseball on major league tv you see the yeah. box and you know if a ball goes in that box and strike balls outside the box the umpire calls a a, a strike you're like wait wait a second right. the umpire didn't see that box right there i can see that box i can <laughs> but but it, but again you yeah. know why not you know utilize yeah. ai for for something like that or, or why not utilize ai instead of having physical people like on the basketball court. imagine this i mean this is this is thinking yeah. outside yeah and, Instead of having physical people outside, why not use AI to that can be able to see the entire court in the sport of basketball, for instance, and, yeah. and be able to call Make that, all the calls. Block charge. Or be able to call yeah, that, right. that traveling or the right. goaltending or what have you, or even on the football uh, field. Now, to me, gosh, you know, it's a lot of judgment calls and uh, officiating. Now, if you really want yeah. AI doing it, you better kind of turn tune that level down a little bit. Or, you know, <laughs> there, there'll be a holding call every play in football, as you yeah, and I, you and I right. know that. But, I mean, right. I, can, I, can, I can honestly see... You know that AI technology um, advances so much that you know what it'll be you know more probably influence in terms of you know the officiating aspect of the game. It's it's interesting because it it sounds like it also could uh, pick up the speed of the game, right? Yeah. Because now you have the replay replay booth, and uh, how long does that take to have that review? But if yeah. the AI system is trained and expert, which yeah. of course we have many experts yeah. in our research faculty here that are still not sure if those systems can be trained enough to trust, but but over time, maybe oh, so. Oh, right? can, you, can you see Nick Saban arguing with the AI <laughs> on a call? That, that'd, be the, that'd be probably the funniest thing I'll ever, I'll ever want to see. No, no, you're wrong. I'd love a picture of that though, yes. <laughs> Mark, this is great. Where do yeah. you see uh, this going for, for, for UB Athletics? Well, you know, I, I see obviously it's going to be a positive, you know, for, for everyone involved, but yeah. particularly for, for UB, for us to be to continue to invest in the technology that's out there. Yeah. Uh, you know, us involved in, and investing. for the fans, right? Yeah, the fans. I know there's a lot of yeah. opportunities there for us to help. But but us investing in in the catapult, yeah. you know, something yeah. like the catapult sure. system that that helps our coaches, help our athletic trainers. Um, you know, I'd also say too, like you mentioned, for the fans. Uh, you know, I know we've had this conversation before, but mm-hmm. being able to you know upgrade our facilities in regards to the capacity needed for, you know, fans are following so much more. Yeah. Not 
a paper, you know, program, but, yeah. you know, on their phone, you know, being able to track, you know, stats and, and that aspect of it. You know, I think that's going to be very important to keep, you know, fans engaged, you know, that, that way. And, and you're seeing it, you know, happening. And, uh, you know, I, I feel that, you know, we'll be, you know, also on the cutting edge of that as it pertains to, you know, the Mid-American Conference to be able to boost that, that fan engagement and that fan experience in our, in our venues. Well, that's great. Well, Mark, uh, we appreciate you coming in for this interview. It's been very informative. We're very happy with the UB Athletics program. Thank you for what you're doing there. Look forward to the upcoming season. And uh, uh, I don't, I guess I don't have my monitor to follow everybody's, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, bio stats yeah. as they're playing on the yeah. field yet, but maybe I will from the box. Well, well who so. knows? I mean, that could be <laughs> that could be down the road. But no, Bryce, I appreciate you and and, and your team. You know, obviously, um, as what we're discussing here today, I mean, athletics is not the most important aspect of the university. There's what you do, what you know, what our um, various academic units do. Um, you know research what happens here i mean you know that's the more important aspect of, of the university as we continue to grow you know this flagship um and obviously our status of uh, you know obtaining the top 25 right. you know public but you know i think you know whatever we can do from an athletic standpoint from from a branding as as i say it some of the ladies have said it you know what we can be that front porch Absolutely. you know for the university and, and you know the more success that we have you know we we, you know, bring about, you know, obviously that brand for the university, which is which is key in this day and age of competing for students. Absolutely, it is. Well, Mark, thank you very much for uh, you. joining us today. Yep. Let's check in on the results of our social media poll from our last episode. We ask, does social media have an overall positive or negative influence on today's students? Well, 71% of you think that social media has a negative influence on today's students. Thanks for weighing in. Head over to UBIT's X page right now to weigh in on our latest poll. Our question to you today is, have you been directly affected by a security breach? We can't wait to hear from you. We'll share the results in our next episode. Do you have a question for me when it comes to technology at UB? Here's your chance to ask. Submit your questions to cio at buffalo.edu and we'll answer some in the next episode. Thanks for watching this episode of Tech Talk. Check out our other episodes online anytime at buffalo.edu slash ubit slash techtalk.